Hello, saints, peace, grace, and love in Christ Jesus be with all of you out there. You know, our foundation as the body of Christ is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And the very next thing on top of that foundation should be the gospel of grace. And in order to understand the gospel of grace, uh, you need to understand right division and what dispensations are. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul is talking to the believers of Corinth and he says, For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building, according to the grace of God which is given unto me as, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon, for other foundation can no man lay, then that is laid which is Jesus Christ. Right division and dispensation is so important to understand that I've been repeating it over and over and over again in most of my videos and if you haven't noticed by now all false teaching has one thing in common a common denominator they don't rightly divide scripture and they don't understand dispensations and surely they don't understand who Paul was or understand that the gospel of grace was a mystery, a secret never revealed before to anyone else until Paul was converted from a believer to believer in Christ Jesus. You see, Paul was a Hebrew of Hebrews. He was a Pharisee. He was highly educated. He knew the scriptures probably better than most of his peers. And he had risen to the very top of the Jewish priesthood and Paul read about all the prophets, all the prophecies, over and over again, probably thousands of times throughout his life. And if Paul had seen, let's say for an example, if Paul had seen the rapture in the book of Isaiah, or in the book of Daniel, or any other of the prophecies, then he surely would not have said in his letters that the rapture was a secret revealed to him by Jesus Christ. How can the rapture be a secret? if it can be found in the Old Testament or anywhere else outside of Paul's letters. You see, that would make Paul a liar when he said that Jesus had shown him a mystery, a secret, and one of them being the rapture and so on. So when you understand that there's an agenda to discredit Paul and everything he wrote, trying to make Paul look like a liar, then you'll understand why people try to put the mysteries outside of Paul's books and why people try to put the body of Christ inside the nation of Israel's program. Uh, you know, there's a bigger picture going on that most people are unaware of. And when you put the rapture in Israel's program, you call Paul a liar. If you call Paul a liar, then you remove our identity in Christ Jesus as the body of Christ. And if you do that, then you end up saying that the church has become Israel. You see, one lie leads to another lie and it's all to discredit who Israel is and who we are in the body of Christ. That's why it's so important to rightly divide and understand dispensations. Now can you see why the enemy hates dispensations so much? Can you see why false doctrines have one thing in common? Can you see why understanding right division and dispensations can set you free? I hope so because I really hope so because it has truly set me free. And something else that's very important concerns the book of Revelation and the Apostle John. And if you understand that the book of Revelation is a vision of Daniel's prophecy concerning the 70th week, then you can see also that Daniel had no knowledge of the rapture because it hadn't been revealed yet. So the rapture is not in the book of Revelation either. And when you try to put the rapture into the nation of Israel's program, you end up confused you end up believing other false teachings then all of a sudden you're performing works to keep your salvation you're scared to lose your salvation and the cycle of confusion continues on the only way you'll ever understand God's Word and be secure in your salvation in Christ Jesus is when you understand that Paul's 13 books are for and to us today and the other books are not to us but can be for our learning in order to understand the gospel of grace, you need to have something to compare it to. And that's where the other books come in. If you can compare Israel's program against the body of Christ's program, 
prophecy versus mystery, then you can see the uniqueness of the gospel of grace for us today. Then suddenly Paul's books come to life and the Bible suddenly comes together and it makes sense. And also, right division and dispensation uh, it will keep you protected from all the false doctrines going around today. If, if you make right division and dispensation a priority in learning God's word. So in this video, I'm going to go over the basics of right division and dispensation once again. And we're going to keep this video uh, just about those two things. Because lately I've been repeating over and over again what right division is and dispensation is and Israel's prophecy program versus the body of Christ mystery program in just about every video I'm making. And it takes up a lot of time, you know, that can be used teaching a new topic versus repeating myself over and over again. And truthfully, it's not very practical. It's not very efficient to have to repeat things again and again. So I've decided to make a quick video about right division and dispensations. For some of you, it's going to be a repeat. It could be a refresher. And maybe for some of you, this is the first time you're hearing this, uh, but it's very important. Then in our future studies, I'll just point people back to this video if they don't understand right division and dispensations or if they've never seen it. That way I can spend more time on studies uh, and less time repeating myself. So that way it makes uh, you know everybody aware of right division and dispensation. All right, so let's begin. And first things first, the only way you're ever going to understand the Bible, again, is if you rightly divide God's Word. In 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Second, when you learn how to rightly divide God's word, you'll discover that God designed the past 6,000 years into different administrations or dispensations of time. Now, I've seen people lately trying to say that dispensations is a made-up concept and the whole idea of right division and dispensation was created recently. And if you notice, it's the same attack that they use with the rapture. They say the rapture is a new concept and it was something that somebody devised, you know, early on or later on uh, in the ministry and so forth. So they use the same lies to attack different things. Now, let me let me tell you why these uh, why people think dispensations is new. And, and one of the reasons why they think it's new is because it is not in the newer versions of the Bible, the corrupted perversions of the Bible. And the word dispensation is not found in those versions. Okay, so that's exactly, you know, why some people think dispensations is something new because it's foreign to them because they're not using the King James Version. So let's look at the real Bible, the King James Version Bible for a second and see what dispensations are. Paul tells us clearly but you have to use the King James Bible. It's so important. In 1 Corinthians 9, 17, For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed to me. Now, I want you to take a look at the new version, the NIV, 1 Corinthians, the same verse. If I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. If not voluntarily, I am simply discharging the trust committed to to me you see they remove the the, the the word dispensation in Ephesians 1 10 that in this dispensation of the fullness of times you see it's telling you that is a time period it is a an administration it is the fullness of times it is a, a certain uh, period of time it is, is different than all the others that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ. He's speaking about the body of Christ here, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Now in the NIV, to be put into effect when the times, you see, reach their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. Ephesians 3, 2, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you word, NIV, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me. It's interesting they use the word administration here, and I've used a, an example in a past video of the word administration. If you think about the presidency, uh, and, and I'm sure you've heard the phrase, you know, the Obama administration or the Clinton administration or the Bush administration. 
You see, each one of those administrations was unique to that president. See, the Obama administration is very different than the Bush administration was, and the Bush administration is very different than the Reagan administration. They all had a unique program designed for that period of time. And that is, they could be said that the Obama dispensation is different than the Reagan dispensation, okay? It's an administration. It is unique to a certain period of time. Now in Colossians 1, 25, 26, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me, okay, a certain time, a certain administration of God was given to Paul to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. The NIV says, I have become its servant. They remove the word uh, minister and they replace it with servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. All right, so we know the word dispensations is in the Bible. It is in the King James Version Bible. And we know that the context of the word dispensation is correct in, in the way that we're using it right now as an administration, as a, uh, a time period designed for only a certain group of people. And we know that the people who are trying to hide the, the truth of God's word are doing it by creating corrupted versions of the Bible. Whenever you catch people trying to hide something, you have to ask the question, why are they trying to hide this? The answer is obvious. Understanding what dispensations are is the key to understanding God's word. Without understanding dispensations, you're wide open to deception. You're wide open to receiving whatever false doctrine that they want you to believe. You see, right divisions and dispensations actually protect you from being tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine that's thrown at you. It's your shield to ward off the lies that are out there. And these people trying to hide this truth are well aware of what they're doing. They know that once you understand right division and dispensations, they've lost control over you. They can't control you with false doctrine, trying to put you back under the law, trying to manipulate you. This is why you don't see the word dispensation in the new versions or perversions of God's word they're hiding the truth and they're hiding the most important tools that you need to understand his word in fact the next study the the video the next video is going to be a shocker it, it's all about a certain corrupted version of the bible and uh I'm not going to tell you which one it is right now but we're going to keep it we're going to keep it as a surprise for now okay <clears throat> and as I was preparing this study I came across something I'd never seen before in in 40 years uh, and it really floored me I found direct evidence that this very very common highly used version of the Bible states that salvation can be lost but in the King James Version it says it's impossible for salvation to be lost this is a huge find and you don't want to miss the next study I'll give you a small hint though this corrupted version of the Bible changes just a small word that makes all the difference in the context of a certain phrase. It changes the context entirely and it makes it seem like salvation is not permanent and it can be lost. And if you can figure out what the word and phrase is, if you already know, please share it with me in the comment section. Okay, moving on with this study on right division. Now simply, once again, let me show you the seven different administrations or dispensations throughout the Bible and we've just read where Paul mentions one of those dispensations the dispensation of the gospel of grace and there are others uh, the first one is innocence where we start out and we see Adam and Eve with mankind the second one is conscience again Adam and Eve and mankind the third dispensation is human government and here we see Noah and it involves the world and the fourth dispensation is promise where God promises Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob a covenant and makes promises to them concerning the nation of Israel. In the fifth dispensation is law. And here we see Moses. We know Moses was handed down the laws, all the commandments, and he gave them over to the nation of Israel. That's why we call that time period or dispensation of law. 
in the sixth dispensation where we're at today it is the dispensation of grace the gospel of grace the mystery gospel the secret gospel that was given to paul by jesus christ and it formed the body of christ jesus that's us the seventh dispensation that's soon to come will be the dispensation of kingdom it'll involve the nation of israel it's going to involve the fulfillment of all the prophecies and it is going to involve the second coming of our lord jesus now i know that's a lot of information that's okay just keep in mind that there's a difference between prophecy and mystery the old testament four gospels and the end time books hebrews through revelation are all about the nation of israel's prophetic program its prophecy you see paul's books romans through philemon and 13 books are all about the body of christ and the mystery program in order to understand this even more we're going to use this chart that's in front of us right now this illustration take a look at it now notice something peculiar about this illustration here something's missing and what's missing in this chart if you look closely you'll notice that we are missing the gospel of grace is missing the mystery program is missing the apostle paul is missing it's not on this illustration so what we're looking at here is the prophetic program for the nation of israel the prophetic program is everything that's been prophesied to happen to the nation of israel in the old testament in the four gospels hebrews through revelation from the birth of the nation of israel to the fulfillment of all the promises that god has made with them notice how the bible is written the old testament is to for and about the nation of israel matthew mark luke and john again it is to for and about the nation of israel and the coming kingdom in the book of acts we see a transition the book of acts is commonly called a transitional book we see a transition from the nation of israel over to the body of christ from the kingdom gospel the gospel of the kingdom to the gospel of grace and then we see Paul's books, Romans through Philemon. This is where the body of Christ is, is uh, the topic, okay? And we see Paul and the mystery and the secret. And then we see Hebrews through Revelation. This is after the rapture. It is written to the tribulation saints in Daniel's 70th week. It's all about the, the, that period of time, uh, the second coming going into the 1,000 year reign of Christ. Now, what you're seeing now on this illustration, on this chart, is what would have happened. It, it, it's what would have happened if the nation of Israel would have repented when Stephen prophesied the day of the Lord being at hand, or the kingdom being at hand. John the Baptist was saying, listen, the day of the Lord is at hand, and the kingdom that's been prophesied from days of old is about to begin because our messiah is here the pro the prophesied messiah that the prophets talked about in the old scriptures this is him he is here now and jesus being their messiah but they couldn't see it right if you notice where the prophet stephen is is positioned on this chart take a note that the very next thing to take place is daniel's 70th week and this is also the book of Revelation, you see. The day of the Lord and the second coming and so on. It's important to understand that Daniel was a prophet. God revealed to Daniel what would take place during the end days. Then later on in the future, God reveals to the apostle John a more detailed view of Daniel's 70th week. God shows John exactly what was going to happen or, you know, what's going to happen or what Daniel's prophecy was all about. The book of Revelation, John's revelation, was not about something new or a mystery never revealed before. John's revelation was a more detailed version of Daniel's 70th week. Again, for Daniel's people, the Jews, the nation of Israel, the book of Revelation is still prophecy. It has nothing to do with the mystery program revealed to the Apostle Paul. And when you rightly divide, you, you can see clearly the different dispensations, God's different administrations, God using prophecy for the nation of Israel, and then using mysteries given to the Apostle Paul for us today, the body of Christ. But since the nation of Israel didn't repent, since they rejected Stephen, 
God puts a hold on the kingdom program and he starts something new with a man named Saul, as we know as Paul. So the most important thing to take away from this illustration and this chart is this. You notice that even without the body of Christ, even without Paul or the mystery gospel of grace, what's important to understand here is that the prophecy of Daniel, the book of Revelation, the scriptures of Hebrews through Jude, would have happened if the nation of Israel would have repented and believed that the Messiah, uh, Jesus was their Messiah. And the reason why everything would have happened is because it's all prophecy. You see, Revelation is a detailed view of the prophecy of Daniel's 70th week, plus all the other prophecies in the Old Testament about the Lord's day, the second coming, the tribulation, Jacob's trouble, and a 1,000 year millennial reign. All right. So now in this next chart, we're going to involve our gospel, the gospel of grace, our, our apostle Paul, the mystery, the secret. So we see what happened when Israel rejected their Messiah. God puts a hold on the prophetic program and he reveals the mystery program to Paul, uh, who, who we knew as Saul. All right. Same person. Saul was his Jewish name. Paul was his Roman name. So Paul is the first person to receive the revelation of the gospel of grace, the mystery program. A couple things that are very important to understand here is that the mystery of the gospel of grace had never been known before Paul. The mysteries were revealed to Paul and Paul alone. They were not in the Old Testament. They were not in the four gospels. They're not in Hebrews through Revelation. You'll only find the mysteries within Paul's books, Romans through Philemon. Paul's salvation begins in Acts chapter 9, and we know that Luke is the author of that book, not Paul. And within the mystery uh, program are other mysteries. The rapture is one of those mysteries revealed to Paul. Okay, And also the judgment seat was another mystery. The building of a, a body of members was a mystery. Making us fellow heirs with the Son was a mystery. Making us fellow heirs with the Jews was a mystery because in the gospel of grace there is neither Jew nor Greek we're all one body we have equal sonship in Christ Jesus in other words there's a list of mysteries things never revealed before to the nation of Israel things never mentioned by prophecies uh, that suddenly were revealed to the Apostle Paul a completely new gospel one separate from the kingdom gospel and one designed to save everyone both Jews and Gentiles together in one body. All right? Under the prophetic program, Israel is promised the earthly kingdom. Under the mystery program, the body of Christ is promised the heavenly kingdom. Not the kingdom of heaven, but the heavenly kingdom. There is a difference. For example, let's take a look at the rapture, the harpazo, the catching away of the body of Christ prior to Daniel's 70th week. The rapture was something new that was revealed to Paul. It's one of the mysteries in the new gospel of grace. Salvation without the law, but by grace through faith alone. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. Okay, Paul is showing them a mystery something never revealed before it is not found in the prophecies it is not found in the book of isaiah it is not found in daniel it is not found in zechariah it is not found in any other the the old testament books it's not found in the four gospels it's not found in revelation because the book of revelation is a detailed view of the prophecy of daniel so this is a mystery never before revealed okay we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Now, pay careful attention to verse 51. Paul says, I show you a mystery, something that was never known before, something that had never been prophesied by the prophets. This is something different and it is something new. It is outside of the prophetic program for Israel. We know the prophets prophesied hundreds of times concerning the resurrection of the saints 
at the second coming. So obviously the resurrection is not the mystery of the rapture, right? What Paul mentions here is something different, something other than the resurrection of the Old Testament saints. This mystery Paul speaks about here concerns just the body of Christ, not the Old Testament saints, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with those with these words. See, Paul just revealed this mystery of the rapture, a more detailed explanation of what the rapture is, okay? So now that you have some idea that uh, what would have happened to the nation of Israel if they would have repented and believed that Jesus was their Messiah as a nation, okay, you have some idea what would have happened, but because they didn't do that, now you can see how God revealed something new, a secret. It's called the mystery gospel revealed to the Apostle Paul, and it is written for us in Romans through Philemon. The most important thing to understand before we move on is that all throughout the Bible, prophecy is for the nation of Israel from Genesis to Revelation, minus Paul's books, and the body of Christ is only found not in the prophetic program, but in the mystery program through Paul, right? Okay, so the prophecies are for Israel and the mysteries are for the body of Christ Jesus. And I hope I got that point through loud and clear because it's so important to understand. If you're ever going to understand the rapture and, wh and it, why it's not found anywhere outside of Paul's books, you need to understand that concept. So how do we know that Jesus revealed this great mystery to Paul and Paul alone? Well, Paul tells us clearly over and over again in his letters that the gospel of grace was a mystery revealed to him by Jesus Christ himself. Look at Romans 16 verse 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Okay, so we hear, we see here a secret, a mystery, uh, something that was revealed to Paul by Jesus Christ our Lord himself. And it is, this is what Paul's gospel is all about. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 7, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. You see that? God kept this mystery, this secret gospel of grace, hidden within himself before the world was even created. And he revealed it when the nation of Israel rejected him as the Messiah. Okay, in verse 8, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would have they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. The mystery gospel, the secret hidden in the Lord since before the foundation of creation was so secret that not one of the sons of men knew that it existed. None of the prophets knew. None of the, prophe the prophecies talk about it. Period. All right. Ephesians 3, 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Galatians 1, verse 11, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. It isn't something that was ever known before. For I neither received it of man. Paul didn't receive it from Peter or anyone else. Neither was I taught it. Okay, Paul didn't learn it going to the synagogues or reading the prophecies or reading scripture. He wasn't taught it. It was a revelation that came directly from Jesus Christ, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ, Paul says. So with that in mind, everything outside uh, of what was revealed to Paul was not part of the mystery, 
Those were all prophecies to Israel. The rapture was a mystery revealed to Paul. The rapture was not a prophecy, but a mystery. Israel knew nothing about the rapture. They knew everything about the, the resurrection, but nothing about this uh, strange event called the rapture. Nor did the apostles, nor did John the Baptist, nor did Stephen. None of them knew about the rapture except for Paul. D Daniel didn't know anything about it. Isaiah didn't know anything about it. And so forth. The promise of God's earthly kingdom goes all the way back to Adam and it continues with the nation of Israel. Genesis 12 onward until we come to Paul, our apostle Paul. After they reject their prophet Stephen and they kill him, then we see God pausing the kingdom program. He pauses Israel's program and then he reveals to Paul the mystery program, the secret, the creation of the body of Christ Jesus containing both Jews and Gentiles, one body made up of many members. Then, when the body of Christ is removed, God restarts the kingdom program once again. As see, at the rapture, God is going to go back uh, to where he left off with Stephen. The kingdom program once again with Daniel's 70th week, the seven-year tribulation period, and God gave John a more detailed view by revelation, Okay, hence the book Revelation, which is a book of prophecy. Why is Revelation a book of prophecy? Because again, it's for the nation of Israel. It's not for the body of Christ. We'll be gone before Daniel's 70th week, right? God revealed to John a play-by-play -play of the prophecy revealed to Daniel back in Daniel 9, 10, 11, 12. So God goes from prophecy to mystery back to fulfilling prophecy. God goes from prophecy in the Old Testament, the four Gospels. He goes to mystery with Paul. And then after the rapture, God goes back to fulfilling the prophecies with the nation of Israel in Daniel's 70th week or the book of Revelation, right? Why did God do it that way? Because God was dealing with Israel. Then they rejected him. So God starts a new program, the body of Christ. And when the rapture takes place and the body of Christ is gone, God is going to go back to dealing with the nation of Israel once again. We see prophecy, then mystery, again, back to prophecy. So like I said, this, this is just a quick overview. And in order to understand the Bible, it's essential that you first understand right division. And when you understand right division, then you'll see how God has been dealing with mankind through administrations or dispensations, working with the nation of Israel through prophecy and by covenants. And when Israel rejects Jesus as their Messiah, God turns to the Apostle Paul and he reveals the mystery of the new gospel, the gospel of grace, building a body of believers of both Jews and Gentiles, 2,000 years of grace, then the rapture, then God turns back to Israel to fulfill the remaining prophecies. Now, we've talked about right division and dispensations a bit, just a general overview, but there's many other videos on this channel that are extremely important also. Some of them are all about the rapture, some of them are all about the parables that you read in, in the four gospels, and some are about the end time events, Daniel 70th week and others. So I highly recommend you take the time to learn about the seven dispensations. It's so important that you have a good foundation on how they work. There's a, a seven part study on my channel that uh, I made a while back. And I recommend you take some time to watch each one of those, especially the last three, the fifth dispensation of law, the sixth dispensation of grace, and the seventh dispensation of the coming kingdom. Those three are very important if you're planning to ever understand God's word in the future. I cannot stress that enough. Now listen, I spent over 30 years of thinking that I understood the Bible, but when I was honest with myself, I had to admit that I really didn't understand the Bible, and I had more questions than answers. And I was relying on what preachers said instead of what God's Word was telling me. Confusion after confusion after confusion. And it wasn't until the Lord led me to the understanding of right division and dispensations, then I finally, finally, finally understood the entire Bible. All the confusion disappeared, and an amazing thing happened. Suddenly, I could see which preacher was telling the truth and which one was teaching false doctrine. 
It was as clear as night is today. I knew immediately which doctrines were false and which one was really coming from the Word of God. And at that point, I made a promise that I would spend the rest of my life exposing this truth, teaching right division and dispensations, and showing people how to do the very same thing for themselves. It's a game changer because this truth gives you the power to learn and understand the Bible on your own instead of relying on others to tell you what God's Word says. <clears throat> and you can be easily deceived uh, if you're relying on other people, right? That's not good, folks. False teachers rely on the fact that you don't have a clue what right division and dispensation are. They, they count on the fact that over 99% of Christendom relies on being taught instead of teaching themselves. And they're keeping the Holy, the, the Holy Spirit from doing his job in your life that's what they're doing and it's very sad but I want you to know right here now that you can change that immediately and before we close like I said earlier you don't want to miss the next study uh, that we're gonna have some shocking information concerning a new version that many people are using right now that says salvation can be lost so stay tuned for that study and uh, it should be out soon Lord willing okay so that's it for this study Peace, grace, and love in Christ Jesus be with all of you saints, and I'll see you on the next video, Lord willing.